we present the 2005 Toyota Dealer Rally. Final day of the Toyota Dealer 1000 off-road event at All and Sundry going in Leidenburg, the scene of two fine days worth of racing already. The event was also being adjudicated by the World Motorsports Controlling Body, the FIA, in the hope of the Rainbow Nation being granted an event on the world circuit next year. So the locals were out to try and impress, and that they did. After two days and four stages resulting in almost 700 k's worth of racing, it was Alfie Cox and navigator Ralph Pitchford who were in front in their proudly South African Nissan hard body. They were more than 17 minutes to the better ahead of Clint Gibson and Marcel Three in their bat Chevy. Cox, a former Dakar Rally two-wheel star, only had to nurse the car to the line 367 k's later to claim the winning class and overall victory, with his nearest rival more than 80 minutes back. Still, Cox knew that only a marriage between caution and aggression would win it for him, and he had to make the hard body stay true to its name. In second place, the Clint gibson Marcel Three combination was putting together a great showing. They were eighth after day one, but a fine third and fourth leg saw them shift up to second and first in class A for space frame cars. The Impumalanga crowd were enjoying the noisy spectacle as Gary Bantolt and his nav Siegfried Rousseau in their eyeburst bat 3.5 took to the start of leg four over 207 kilometers through more than 25 farms with a tough mountain section thrown in for good measure. The 2002 national champ Duncan Foss was as far back as he's ever been after a serious misfire caused a loss of power. Still he and co Henny Ter Stecher were determined to pick up some positions. Their expressions in car told you so. But all eyes were on the defending SA champion Hannes Schwobler and his man the moustachioed Francois Jordan. The Nissan Motorsport gents were given maximum time penalties after not completing the first leg on Thursday and they were on a hiding to nothing, but no one told Hannes that. While Hannes was throwing everything at it, some people will do anything to get the money shot. Like getting absolutely sucked. Yeah, well, no fun. The space frame cars were giving the production cars a real run for their money due to the terrain and the varying stages of rallying on and off-road. Mark Corbett and John Moore were eighth in Class A and were piloting their Century Properties Development's car up the field. The Toyota team and manager Wayne Haddad was smiling broadly when three Toyotas had made their appearance in the top ten. Paolo Piazza was one of them, in fourth overall and leading Class D. As for Ford, while well, their top vehicle was being piloted to a spirited run in Leidenberg. Manfred Schroeder was second after day two, dropped down to fifth overall and second in Class D behind the Toyota, but the lanky driver was having a lot of fun in the big four-litre. Cox, meanwhile, was applying his mind and racing with a lot of savvy. All he really had to do to clinch the 25 championship points on offer was to finish, and that's what he was on his way to doing. But make no mistake, Cox is a racer at heart, and he was going fast at the same time. The hard body was sounding mighty fine too. Gibson was having a near faultless run and ever since the short prologue on day one he's been bugging the big name teams. He and Trithui weren't overawed by the big scalps they were putting away one by one. Another big name in off-roading in South Africa is the Bertholdt moniker. This time it was Gary with Siegfried Rousseau next to him. They were squeezing their advanced soft eyeburst bat as hard as they could in third place and second in class A. Foss in the big four-litre pickup that will compete in the new SB class in 2006 was 36 overall after their nightmares on legs one and three. But this fitness fanatic mountain biker does not know a thing about giving up and was going hard, very hard. The same could be said for his nascent teammate Krobler. 
Afriso. Horen kut in. Die rechts. Shop die right. Ik voor. Het is voor. Op die right. 100 meter. Het is 90 left. Het is 90 left. Another big name in SA Motorsport is Piazza Musso. Paolo was in the Toyota with Nav Okifuri, and these two had a smooth run from the word go. They were seventh after day one, fourth after day two, and were looking to improve on that on the final day. The father and son combination of Nick and Ryan Harper were eating up the ground. Nick is yet another fit man who takes no prisoners in his back 4.2 Audi engine space frame. Schroeder, leading Class D in that distinctive blue Ford, was gliding over the smooth farm road, albeit a little squeaky. Chris Fisser and co Yapi Bardnost featured in the second Toyota in the top ten. Fisser was lying 8th on the Production Car Drivers' Championship points log, and he was sure to better that with his 7th place here in Leidenburg. Corbett and Moore were 28th overall, but that's where it ended. They were going well up to the 60k mark of the fourth leg, and then things started sounding decidedly wonky in the back. A broken left arm, and that was the end of the road for them. The crew in 8th place overall was Kronje and Houghton. They had gearbox problems which then resulted in a burnt clutch, but some fine work by their crew got them back on track and back in the Toyota Dealer 1000. Nissan and the second one to be in the wars was Duncan Foss's steed which was not that trusty this time. He just could not get it going properly and had little niggles throughout. Here he talks them over with Nissan Motorsport General Manager Glenn Hall. Another family combination, this time the walks. Robert and Gareth in their Chenoweth were going like the proverbial Boeing. Overnight they'd slotted into the 10th place but had already picked up one more. Henry Zermatten and co. Bodo Schwegler were well on their way to extending their world record run of consecutive finishes, 21 of them. The Raobi Mitsubishi was just rolling along like it was a leisurely Sunday afternoon drive. Even though they were only using two-wheel drive, after some strange diff noises, they were solid. Terence Marsh and his navigator Michael Whitehouse in the Nashua Mobile back. Whitehouse is the leader in the co-drivers national championships with 74 points, seven ahead of Ryan Harper. Despite fan ball trouble, they were picking up positions wildly. The motorite racing teams Evan Hutchinson and Vincent Horn had started in 13th, but had whittled away and were leading the B-class by a healthy margin. Hutchinson's crew had done a complete prep on the car again after day two and had it race ready for the final push. It was worth the all-night effort. The car certainly takes a pounding. The man with a nice first name, Arnold Duplessis, and his partner Johan Knox in their 3.3-litre Nissan had languished down there in 31st place after two days of racing. But boy, oh boy, they were barreling up the standings. They were up to third in class, picking up three places. Phil Nell and Peter Newbury and the Lux Subaru 2-litre were in 20th and 9th in class, but disaster struck soon after this as they ran into mechanical problems themselves. Mark and Stuart Moffat and the Landy with a 2.5 BMW engine were 22nd, but a big push in stage 4 and an even bigger one in 5 gave them a huge boost, up to 13th and 2nd in class. The Aleko Nissan of Nandis Alberts and Colin Hunter was still going well here, but mechanical failure put them out just afterwards. Another DNF or did not finish on the cards. 
Bevan Bertolt and co. Nick Salomolela had had puncture troubles on day two, and yes, the wind was taken out of their tyres again on day three. Bertolt is known for not holding back much, so the Ibers back knew all about it. The way Sonic's Nissan 3.3 of Kutsela was Skagni and Johan Gerber was plagued with electrical problems, and they even lost their odometer, but worse was to come when they had to call it a day with their own mechanical worries. The team of Naim Mosaji and Martin Azim in their space frame car started off in 35th place after day one, moved to 18th on day two, but took more than 11 hours to complete the fourth and fifth stages with mechanical troubles of their own. The top car duo of Dion Skuman and Jan Saim had recollected themselves after falling from 11th on day one to 24th. Ichu and Yap the Brain and the Toyota Hilux were nailing competitors in front of them with monotonous regularity and went from 25th to inside the top 20 in the first 200 k's. At the designated service point after 207 kilometers with a visit through Dahlstrom, it was Alfie Cox and co-driver Ralph Pitchford who extended their lead by more than 15 minutes through some fine concentration and good car handling on the rougher terrain. The Nissan Motorsport crew is a well-oiled machine and here in temperatures touching the 30 degree mark, they were doing their thing. Krubler was still feeling like he had a chance of rescuing some championship points. After all, he was leading Cox by 16, and the three-time champ was showing an amazing amount of fuss bait and self-belief. As Cox took a mini shower, Jordan, a champion co-driver in 01, was explaining that they knew the win was a lost cause. We're actually having a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice ride so far. We had one incident with the road. The bunting from yesterday was still over the road and we didn't really know where to go to, so we hesitated a bit there. But apart from that, we're enjoying it. Uh, we're trying our best to catch up. I know it's a bit of a hopeless task, but uh, as the saying goes in racing, everything can happen, so we're just pushing on as fast as we can. Cox was happy to have a dust-free run at the head of affairs and knew that he had to keep the hard body going at all costs. Yeah, well, no, look, uh, being in front really does help with the dust, you know, so we're just keeping a very good pace. And uh, sure, we've got uh, a couple of minutes in hand, and but we've got sort of like 150 or 170 kilometers to go now after this 1,000k race. So it's been counting down every day, and uh, but everything's going fine. The car's been fantastic today. The route that put us on today was a real off-road route. I, I've really enjoyed today. And uh, yeah, hopefully the next bit, I think, is a little bit of last year, and which was also a very good route too. So. Old thumbs, uh, we're nearly there and uh, we just got to keep it going. Hopefully everything goes okay. As for Clinton Gibson and Marcel Trefui in the Gibson plant high bat, they found the going a little rough. Um, very rough, but uh, on the second part now, the last 50 k's, we obviously got back onto the route that we did yesterday, uh, which made life a lot easier for us. Um, we could obviously pick up the pace a bit, but yeah, overall we're having a fantastic time. We, uh, it, uh, we haven't got lost and the car's behaving itself. Good preparation, good car, we, we over the moon. Well, one crew that wasn't exactly over the moon was the I-Burst team of Gary Bantelt and Siegfried Rousseau. They had more time trouble. Then everything went all right. We uh, made up lots of time on St. Gibson. Um, we were about them about one minute, two minutes behind them, and then we got a puncture in the last t uh, 12 case to go to home. Uh, we couldn't get the jack up. Jack is broken, and um, yeah, and then the power steering belt came off. So the last 10 cases were very, very hard. The Gavin Cronier Robin Houghton pairing was seventh overall and third in class, and we're having a better time of it on day three. Um, not bad this morning, much better than um, than yesterday, more consistent run. Um, been very pleased with the car, we got through a couple of guys quite quickly this morning, chased the forward down, um, took six minutes out of him and um, he had a puncture and managed to pull away a little bit. Fortunately, Odo stopped working about 50 k's from the finish, we weren't sure at one point, we went back just to make sure and lost maybe a minute there, so the forward uh, finished about one minute 20, so we've taken seven and a half minutes. Well, two and a half minutes to go. So we've got to pull out on them again this lap. Positivity in action, and they knew exactly what had to be done. The four they were talking about belonged to Manfred Schroeder, whose team were working on the time configurations. So, how were they going? No, very well. Um, we had one puncture, and then we changed, or 
hit the tree, reversed into a tree, and the spare wheels were jammed, so he battled a bit to get the spare wheel out. Um, and then he did another 20 k's, and then the strap came loose off the flat wheel, so he had to stop and tie that one down again. Um, then we ended up eventually, I think we were five minutes behind Gavin, you know, he came past us, but he made up a minute. Um, I think he needs to be about six minutes ahead of us um, for him to lead the class, and he's a minute and a half, so we're going to try and maintain that gap. You know, if we maintain that gap, then we'll win the class. The start of the fifth and final.